Now, what is an inverse function? First of all, the word inverse comes from the word invert. Invert means to turn around. Now, the inverse of a function is one that undo the row of y and x to its original form. Now, what do you mean by that? Let me show you a picture, uh, an example. All right. Let's say if you put, let's say you have a machine, a vending machine. All right. So you put a dollar in. What do you get? This is a vending machine. All right. And we call that F. All right. You put a dollar in. Okay. What do you get? You get a beer. All right. Then you put two dollars in. What do you get? You get a coke. Now, what is the inverse? What is the inverse function? The inverse function is one that, in this example. Now, if you put a beer in to work a machine, and then you get a one dollar, and then you put a coke in, you get a two dollar. All right. That means what you put into this machine F. And then you come out the output, and you if you put the same output into another machine, it comes out the input of F. Then this machine is called the inverse of F. All right, the, uh, we use the minus one sign. So this is the inverse machine uh, the, of F. All right. Now, not all function has inverse function, okay? Now, so how do we test whether a function has inverse or not? Now, let's, let's, let's look at the different function first. Now, you have a one-to-one -one function. And then you have one to many and then you have a many to one now of course you also have an and you can have combination of these that means a function consists of one to one and part of it is one to one and part of it is many to one okay now what is a one to one function. A one to one function is one that has one input, you will have one output. All right. That means uh, if I draw it graphically, an example will be a, a line. All right. This, this line. All right. Y equals to one plus X. All right. This is a one-to-one -one function. Now, why is a one-to-many function? A one-to-many function, rightfully, one-to-many is not even a function, but I just put it here first, okay? Uh, because I need to use this to explain to you, all right? Now, this is not a function, all right? This is one, one input to many output, right? As, uh, uh, and then the other one is many to one. Many to one could be an example of a y equals to x square graph. All right, you have two input that points to the same output. Now, if you follow this uh, definition, all right. Now, if you have a one to one. Your, out, your inverse also is one to one because it's a row reversal now, all right? So you look at this picture, one to many and many to one. 
uh, this is a this is an example of a one one. Now many to one. When you do an inverse, what will you get? You will get a one to many. All right. So inverse of this will be a. Uh, let's say I call this f. F inverse will be. One, two, many. All right. One to many is not a function. All right. So in this case, all right, many to one does not have an inverse. Now, how about one to many? One to many, it, does the inverse exist? Now, one to many in the first place is not a function. So we don't talk about whether the inverse of this function exists because this is not a function. Okay? Now, so for an inverse to exist, you find that only if the function is a one-to-one, -one, then the inverse exists. All right? So this one, F inverse exists. This one, F inverse does not exist. This one, case closed. This one in the first place is not a function. Now, so only a one-to-one -one is a, has an inverse. Now, there's a vertical line test, all right, you, you learn in the uh, earlier part. You use a vertical line test to test whether it's a function. Now, for the existence of an inverse, you, 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 you use a horizontal line test. Now, what is a horizontal line test? All right, maybe I just uh, uh, write down, try to write down the definition for you. Now, a horizontal line test tells you whether a function is a one-to-one. -one, okay. Now, so what is a horizontal line test? Maybe I use a red or green green now if any horizontal line drawn within the domain, within the range of the function and the line cuts the graph, the function only once, then it is a one to one function. Hence, F inverse exists. Okay, so for existence of inverse function, all right, only if the function is a strictly increasing or strictly decreasing, then it is the then it is it has an inverse, all right, because if it is strictly increasing, there is no turning point, it is a one to one function or if it is strictly decreasing and 
for strictly decreasing there isn't any turning point then you'll find that the F inverse also exists now let's come to the other part of F inverse function is we want to determine how are we going to determine the domain and the range of an inverse function so I put domain of F inverse and range of F inverse now before that maybe I draw uh, I show you by drawing a, a arrow diagram so let's say this is the domain of f all right then this is the function f all right the rule and then you get the range of f now if I do a inverse, all right, inverse, all right, I put the range of f into f inverse. I put the range of f into f inverse. I should get the domain of f. That is the definition of a, an inverse function. Now, so if you look at it properly, you'll find that the domain of f inverse is equal to the range of f all right because look at this all right this is the range of f which is also the domain of f inverse and likewise the range of f inverse is the domain of f okay no. let me just box this up all right this is rather important okay Next, we are going to learn how to sketch the graph of f inverse if given the function, the original function of f of x. Now, before we do that, let's look at the definition again. Now, the inverse of a function is one that undoes the row of, of y and x to its original form. Uh, let me just draw the arrow diagram for you. Let's say if this is the domain of f, that's x. And this is the function f. And then it output onto the image y. And then if you do a f inverse, all right, this y will become x. Now, so let's say your original point is x, y. All right, so your original point is x, y. It's a point on f, all right? So when you do a f inverse, what will happen? All right, it becomes y, x by definition of the inverse function. Let us see how this, uh, where is the location of this point? Uh, I have drawn a graph of f of x for you that is represented in green let's say we take this point which is on fx all right this point is a b so the x coordinate is a and the y coordinate is b so what is the output if we perform an inverse function all right so the inverse function the corresponding uh, point will be f inverse will be uh, it will come out to b a all right so where is the location of this point 
Now, so this the x part will goes to a, so it goes to y. And the y will goes to the y of f will becomes the x of f inverse. Okay, so you have a point B A. Okay. Now we can prove using trigo, all right, that if we do a reflection of the line or of the of this point. A B about this line y equals to x. Okay, let me just draw the line. Let's see, this is the line y equals to x. Alright. All points, that means the original coordinate is x, y. Alright, then if we do a reflection about this line y equals to x, then the corresponding the reflected point, the coordinates will be y x. Because of this property f of x, uh, f inverse is a reflection of f of x about the line y equals to x. Alright, let's now draw the function of f inverse. Now this point here, 0a will be reflected onto this point, all right? whereas this is uh, ab and this will become ba. So your graph of f inverse x will look something like this. Now because of this property is a reflection, now for any point that is on y equals to x let's say there's a point all right there's a point uh, there's an intersection point of f of x with the line y equals to x you find that when you do a reflection the point will remain the same all right so if f of x ever intersect y equals to x then f of x will be equals to x will also be equals to f inverse of x all right so because when you do a reflection all right it will still be on the same point. So that's why you have f of x equals to x and that is also equals to f of x.